Hi, and welcome to Wrenching Up, where we tackle the projects and demonstrate the procedures that you, our customers, ask us to do. We've got two very interesting projects today, and they both involve ignition coils. One on this VW, and the diagnostics is not as quite as simple as you might think. And the other is on a Dodge Dakota, where we actually have to current ramp the ignition coil to get to the root cause of the problem. So let's get started. The shop that I'm in now does a lot of work on Volkswagens, and they see a lot of damage on the coil-on plug connectors due to overheating. And they want to know if they can replace just the connector, or if they have to replace the whole harness through Volkswagen. Well, you've probably run into this in your shop already, a Volkswagen with a cylinder misfire. And on this particular issue, though, it's a PO304, a misfire in cylinder number four. But the diagnostic here is not as quite as simple as you might think. And here to help us today with that is Ryan Coyman from Intermotor. Hi, Ryan. Thanks hey, for Jim. being here. Pleasure. Tell us a little bit about what sets this failure up. Well, as you've already gone ahead and removed this engine cover here, you'll notice we've got a pretty tight engine compartment here. A lot of stuff going on in here. There's still a lot of heat kicking out of here. That's our first indicator right there. As we see the ignition coil here, as you've already pointed out, we've got a PO304. So it's going to be cylinder number four where our problem is. But there's a lot of heat here, and this particular coil has the primary windings and the ignition module incorporated together in the top here. So if we take and look at our new coil, we've got a lot of plastic componentry here, and then we've got the metal sheathing that goes down inside the cylinder head there. This is very prone after time to failures up here. Also, you could have secondary failure where it's arcing to the metal cylinder head itself. Right. Now, I noticed that, of course, we're going to get heat failure up here. It's going to break down the material mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And that may be a little bit about what's going on here. Um, the metal down here, though, that's going to conduct the, the spark from there over to the cylinder head really is caused by more of an internal short, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Perhaps the uh, secondary shorted to the primary, mm -hmm. a lot of inrush current, which is not going to be good for the control module. Absolutely uh, not. So tell us a little bit more about the replacement procedure. Well, the replacement procedure is pretty straightforward. Oh, you know what? Somebody's been here before and broken the clip off this connector here. That's why I asked you to tell us about the replacement oh. procedure, because you guys see this every day. Those darn connectors, the metal clips are gone, and also the connectors kind of deteriorate after a while, don't oh, they, absolutely. Ryan? absolutely. Tell us why they do that. Well, again, it's because of the heat. I'm not sure if it's a, a construction quality issue or something, but because of the heat, uh, this one here, the clip is missing. I've seen some of these where it's just completely disintegrated there. The factory fix for this, do you know what that is? Replace the entire wire harness. Absolutely, absolutely, and nobody ever likes to do that. Well, what is your fix? Well, we have a line called TechSmart in which we, it's a problem-solving solution line. And so we've got a pigtail connector specifically for this application here. So we can go in a couple different ways, depending on the, if the electrical terminals are okay, the technician can use the tool that comes with the kit, release the terminals, back them out, use the original wiring with a new plastic connector, or simply cut the wires and splice them back into place here. Multiple ways of attacking it. I love that that tool comes with the kit because it's so much easier if we don't have to replace the wiring. Just replace that busted up connector, isn't it? So let's go ahead and get this thing replaced. All right, perfect. Well, first thing you'll notice, there's no bolts holding this coil down. So it comes up relatively straightforward and simple. Now we're going to take our new coil, and it's already got a little bit of dielectric grease in there, so we don't have to worry about further insulation there. And now we're going to gently install it in place here. Do a little bit of twisting, make sure it's seated fully. Now what's some of the things that you've seen in your days? Prying, hammering, exactly. banging. Don't do those things. <laughs> exactly. That kind of kills the warranty story in this when you try and return it later <laughs> on. So, Well, let's go ahead and get this connector replaced and get this vehicle down the road. I think we're gonna break right with this one. And that's the name of the game, isn't it, Jim? That's right. Got a tough drivability problem. I've got one here with this. It's got a lean mixture. And, you know, everything's right. The volume's right, the pressure's right, fuel filter gone through all of these. Ever had one like that? So get out the oscilloscope. I know you do this sort of thing. Connect up a back probe to the fuel injectors and start looking at those things. And right here, I've got a great pattern. Look at a good on time. The, the injector is ramping up. I got a good off signal. So let me show you a tip that's going to save you a lot of time. This is great. You're going to love it. A current probe, a low current probe, sometimes called an amp clamp. And I've got to hook the channel B of my oscilloscope. All you do is clip it around one of the two injector wires. In this case, I got a jumper wire on there. And let's look at that channel B picture. 
right here, the blue line. See where it's ramping up? About halfway up the ramp. What we've got here is an anomaly. That shows us that the fuel injector hasn't turned on until halfway up the ramp. That's why it's running lean. The computer turned the injector on, but the piddle didn't open in time. It should not go that high. About 25% up the ramp is where these things typically open up. Now I know where my problem is. I got high resistance in the fuel injector circuit, which I can check with my amp meter. Should be about six to eight milliamps or so at idle. And if that's okay, I'm gonna have to clean up those injectors. I bet I got sticky pintles on this one. This is gonna be easy to fix. I'm gonna get right to it. 